Howdy folks, welcome back to 59 Mile Arc. We kind of have a fun one for you today, and it's going to be story time today. We haven't had a story time video in a really long time. But we are at Elkhart, Indiana, and we're going to fly by the Charles Walter Piano Factory. Yes, another piano factory, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, those of you who have been subscribed to the channel for a long time will know why I kind of giggle when I say that, but I'll explain it in a moment. Anyway, so we are at Elkhart Municipal Airport in Elkhart, Elkhart County, Indiana, and we are starting on the runway because it's not a modeled airport and there weren't any other ramp starts, so we're just going to start right on the runway. This is actually the smaller runway because this will get us directly into the wind. We will have a 10 knot headwind taking off. It's 10 steady, 15 gust, and from 180. So there we go, directly into the wind. Um, it's foggy today. We're kind of fogged in. But I'm hoping if we stay low enough to the ground, we can fly through the city of Elkhart. And I can show you this piano factory, but it might not work. We'll try. As soon as we see it, though, we're going to take off and head towards Gary, Indiana. If you're wondering where we are, um, Lake Michigan is right there behind those power lines, more or less. Well, actually, I'd take that back. More like there, right off the horizon, with Lake Michigan. So I figured it'd be a musical journey. We'll talk about this piano factory and the Charles Walter piano, and then we'll head to Gary, Indiana. Those of you who are my age grew up with a music man in school every year and on TV a lot. I don't know if the younger folks have even heard of the music man, but it took place in Gary, Indiana. It's about a traveling salesman that was well, selling instruments is a scam, but he um, ended up making people very, very happy accidentally. And sorry to not give a spoiler alert, the movie's like 100 years old, so if you haven't seen it, don't worry about it. Anyway, so that's what we're doing. So from Elkhart, Indiana to Gary, Indiana, I think it's like 82 miles or something like that. We are going to take the localizer approach into Gary, Indiana, even though it's going to be the winds are not in our favor over there, if the weather is what Sky Vector said. If the weather is like Sky Vector and it matches, then there's no good runway. So we'll just take the localizer approach. So that's what we're going to do. Um, in fact, I've been checking the weather of this area in real life for several days now, and this is the best it's gotten. It's been pink on the Medar icon for three days. It's blue at Gary, so maybe we'll have some visibility. But anyway, that's what we're doing today. Um, just thought we'd do something fun and a little bit different. And we'll do story time once we're in the air, but first of all, we have to get this thing set up. And I have flown it before. This is the regular arrow, by the way. This is not the turbo. We're not in the mountains, so we're going to fly the regular one. And um, I'm just looking around here, refamiliarizing myself with this. It has been a while. Let's make sure parking brake is set. And it is. Controls all go back to idle, and they do. Battery has to turn on. Where are my presets here? Because, um, anyway. Battery, where are you? Are you the first one? Yep, you're the first one. There we go. What? is next check the fuel gauges out of my way please fuel plenty of fuel may more than we need make sure the alternator lights and low voltage are on and they are now turn the battery off and then we're going to make sure trim is in the neutral position that should be between the seats there we go let's move that back to get that to neutral just like so and what else? We got to recharge the battery. So if you remember, that is on our menu over here. And which one is it? Nope. I knew it wasn't that one. Why did I do that? It is this one. There we go. Recharge the battery. Spark plug following. Everything is good. We're not going to refuel the engine. It is full as it is. And make sure the auto switch is on on the tanks. And it is. All right. So now we're going to close the baggage door. We're going to hop outside here. And we'll close our baggage door, which is that guy. All right, just like that. We're going to close the main door, which I believe is here. So you click here and you pull up. Is it up to close? Close. Come on, all the way. The wind is literally blowing the door open. Look at this. There you go. And then latch it. Latch it in two places. Excellent. What is next? Fuel tank. We want to do the left tank, and then from there it'll auto switch for us. Now we can look at our throttle quadrants, and we will do what? 
props forward throttle a quarter way alt air close and I can see from here that it is confirm the avionics are off and they are turn the battery on and the avionics are on anyway that's weird isn't it the off button there we go turn that off and then that should be off maybe that's always going to be on hmm interesting nav and rotational beacon are on and what else fuel pump is on mixture rich and it is yell clear prop out the window clear prop and close the window which i can't see from here close prop close window there we go and we start the key which i think you do mouse wheel and let go and there we go awesome all right yep i got it all right let's see what is next um perform oil pressure in temperature rising and they are and the alt switch on which is right you can't see from there on which is here confirm the annunciator lights have gone out and they have throttles to 1500 and they are actually bring that back a little bit because we're above 1500 there we go confirm gyro suction between four and five it's at four Alrighty, what else? Lean the mixture, pull it back to avoid spark plug fouling, but not cut off. There we go. Turn on all of our radios now, finally, or avionics. Turn that on. That is on. Okay, those are already on. Whatever, 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 whatever. That's on now. Alright. What else? Fuel tank to right and then left to make sure that everything stays running the way it should. And it is. Alright. I already synced my gyro. Altimeter barometer. Yes, we need this because we're running real world weather. Alright, so we're going to zoom in on us. Click there. Click details. And altimeter is 2985. And I can't see that far away. Still can't see that far. Still can't see that far. Two, nine, eight, five. So there's eight. Eight, five would be right in between. There we go. Let's see what is next. Then our flight plan. So we are going to put in kind of a fight plan. Sort of. Let's move this yoke out of the way because it's driving me crazy. All right. So what we're going to do, we are going to do visual and super low at first to see this piano factory, which I checked ahead of time. It is modeled in Autogen based on the data. However, it's on the wrong side of the road. And I'll tell you which one it is and where it is when we get there. Um, but we are going to do our localizer approach at the other airports. Let's get that in now because I can't be fiddling this while we're flying in the clouds. So the localizer is 10875. So let's push this. And then 108 all the way, 75. All right, double check, 10875, 108 decimal 75. Flip that thing around. There we go. We'll keep that in a localizer. Let's not worry about that. Then we are going to put kind of a flight plan in. Just kind of. Let's see here. I haven't used it. Maybe I have used it like this before. I don't think so. I like the sounds. Nope, did not mean that. I meant to do that, and then we're going to put in, what, where are we going to intercept this glide slope? We're going to intercept it at Watsu, Wasu. so let's get that in there quick, like so, and then a line to make sure we're lined up, we'll do Ranoi, like so, and then that'll, we'll definitely be on the localizer by then, we're going to fly all this by hand anyway, so it doesn't matter, we'll just point to it on the GPS. And by then, we'll be lined up with our runway. But let's put in our last waypoint anyway, which is the airport. Kilo Golf Yankee Yankee. Just like so. There we go. And, um, nice. So once we want to turn back, we'll do direct to Wastu. And then that'll line us up with our GPS, and then we'll fly. And then we should get, let's see, this is nav one. So if we come over here, 
I assume this top one will pick up our localizer. I'm hoping. I haven't done that in this airplane at all, but just based on basic airplane stuff, I would imagine this is it. I mean, it says nav one there, nav two. This is nav one. This is nav two over here somewhere, right here. And this kind of acts as nav three, but not really. Like DME for nav three. But that's nav two, and this is nav one. And over here, this is nav one. And I'm spending way too much time talking about this because we'll find out together if I have any clue what I'm doing. I guess I can set that up too while I'm looking at it. Approach course 306. So there's 3056. There we go. Alright, so that's our flight plan. Um, 2,000 feet to intercept. Alright, no problem. We'll talk about that again when we get there. What is next? There are no taxi lights on this thing, I don't think. Just landing lights. Alright. Do I turn the fuel pump off yet? I don't see where it says fuel pump off. That's later. Okay. Alright, here we go. Parking brake is set. We're going to do a run up. We're not going to do a run up. We're going to skip the run up today. We did the full complete run up the last time we did this. Alright, so let's see. Fuel pump would come off. No, it wouldn't because we're going to take off. So here we go. Battery, alt switches confirm on, and they are fuel pump on, alt air to close, props and mixtures full forward. And they are flaps to 10 degrees. Um, Megs on both, and they are. Landing lights can come on now, which is here. Trim in the middle, it already is confirmed. Door is locked and latched. And there it is, locked and latched. It is Pytot heat on. Set the heading bug. So if I screw something up, hope that's not right. Shoot, let's sync that. There we go. This is heading bug on this one on this side. Oh boy. Oops. If you rely on mouse wheel support, sometimes that does hint. There we go. Just push it for a runway heading. Simple enough. No autopilot. Start the clock on the yoke, which is down here. In mode. Start. There we go. We're going to take off. So here we go. Lift off around 65 knots. Gear up, flaps up, 300 AGL. Climb at 90, fuel pump off, landing lights off. But we're going to keep the landing lights on because it's so foggy. We will turn the fuel pump off after we get flaps in. But we are not going to go very high. So we're basically going to go this way, make a U-turn, follow a row, and I'll show you where that panel factory is, and then we'll have story time. Um, but anyway, parking brake is off. And let's get these this throttle forward here and you gotta be careful because it just torques and it's super windy and 65 lift off it lifts itself off gear and flaps up bring back the throttles because we're not going to climb there you go wow this is super windy um, fuel pump can come off we will no we will keep the keep the landing lights on. All right, what are we doing here? When do I do? What do I set this to? This is hard to fly. Read a checklist at the same time. Um, what am I doing? All right, 22 on the RPMs, 23 on the manifold. Except we're not going to worry about that because um, oh, that's in the way. I got to get my props and manifold back, or we're going to have a big problem trying to do that. There we go. Oh, there. This is a nice... Okay. There you go. Props to 22. I am turning right on purpose, by the way. There's 22 on the props. And what did I say about manifold? 23. And we're way, we're way below that. We're like 17. Okay. Now let's fly the plane. Let's stay just below this cloud base so we can actually see what we're doing. Alright, let's turn all the way around. Let's do a standard turn. That's a little more than standard. There we go. This is standard turn. It's so windy though. It's just blowing us all over the place. Alright. Let's come down below this cloud line so we can see because we've already crossed. Well, we will be crossing the runway, which I want to do on purpose. Actually, looks like we already did. There we go. That's the other runway though, right? Come on. 
Yep, we're running parallel. Just about parallel to the runway you took off at. Good. Instruments are working. We're exactly where I knew we would be. Nice. All right, there's power lines. We're going to follow this road right here. Just like this. I want to show you where this piano factory is. So if you remember... I don't know how long ago it was. It was a long time ago. If you remember, we did the tour of Estonia, Paywar Scenery, and we found the Estonia Piano Factory there, which is a very high-end, yet very low-cost grand piano that um, I was interested in at the time, but we couldn't fit it in the house. So instead, I ended up buying a Charles Walter piano. Oh, there's something else I forgot to mention. This is pure icing conditions right now, and this is not supposed to be flown in icing. So there's a piano factory in that big building right off the nose, right there, except it's on the wrong side of the road. But there you go, the Autogen data picked up the piano factory. So I think that's super cool. So let's do a quick screenshot outside if I can. I don't know if this is really gonna work like this. But I'm gonna try it. Look at that crosswind too. That's crazy. There it is right there. And we're gonna do a screenshot. We're going to hop in a fly plane. Okay, so anyway. Charles Walter makes grand pianos and upright pianos. So I got a studio upright piano. And I got a special deal on it. But anyway, long story short, it's a very, very high-end piano. Again, for a very low cost. It's a kind of a boutique brand. They don't make very many. And the weather is updating. There you go. Thank you, weather. So these boutique brands... It's kind of cool because, well, look at that crosswind. That's insane. Because you can get very, very high-end, handmade, low-volume instruments for very low cost. But it comes with its quirks. I've been trying to get something from the Piano Factory for a while and not able to. So I have to go through a dealer. I'm not going to get into that. Um... The Estonia piano boutique brand. Some people don't like the sound because every piano sounds vastly different. A lot of people like their Yamaha's and Kwai's pianos because every piano sounds exactly the same. For the most part. If this were a piano channel, everybody would be screaming at me in the comments. Yes, I know better than to say that, but for the most part, you can rely on your Yamaha's and Kwai's sounding pretty much all the same. However, when it comes to Charles Walter, they're all very different. They all feel different. When it comes to Steinway, they all feel different. When it comes to Stony, they all feel different. So um, that's why you don't see the latter two piano brands all that much. But those of those of you who know what they are definitely know what they are. Charles Walter people know what Charles Walters are. Stony people know what Stony Stony pianos are. And um, I'm trying to talk and do a coordinated. Standard rate turn in a super high crosswinds at the same time is not working so well, is it? So anyway, what are we doing? Let's let's head towards Gary, Indiana, because this is 82 miles. So let's see if I can pull up the GPS without crashing, and let's see if I can pull up the flight plan and do direct to Watsu from where we are and come back, and there we go. Did I crash? What did I do? Let's see. Nope, we're still level, and we're still barely climbing. Good. All right, a lot more throttle. Let's get the heck out of Dodge here. We don't need to really look around much anymore. As fun as it is to be in Indiana in this heavy cloud cover, we don't have to be. We don't have to be here. We can fly to Gary, Indiana, and have just as much fun. Anyway, I totally lost track of what I was saying because flying a plane in these conditions while talking about not in plain stuff is super difficult. Um, pianos. So anyway, I love my Charles Walter piano. It's still very new, which means I'm dealing with teething issues, which brings up the other topic I was going to bring about is handmade instruments versus commercial instruments. We're just going to follow the freeway here. Commercial. Handmade versus mass-produced. Golly, this is difficult. Handmade instruments. Everyone is different. They have a longer break-in period. A lot of quirks to work through. Things like that. However, once you work through those quirks, it's worth it in the long term. My Charles Walter Upright is an heirloom quality piano. It's expected to last a hundred years. My Kawhi piano I had before that, while it came straight from the factory, just fine, needed very little setup, 
et cetera, et cetera. Didn't need much tweaking over time. Um, it was good from the get-go, however, long-term. It wasn't very exciting. It was a very boring piano. It wore all very quickly, et cetera, et cetera. My Charles Walters opposite. It's breaking in slowly, but it's going to last forever. And there's our original airport, by the way. So even though it's fogged in, I know exactly where we are. I'm using my instruments. And why am I getting all that drag sound? Is it because it's that windy? Man, this is tough. Um, so anyway, handmade instruments are very nice, but very finicky in the beginning. But if you're patient, and you do your research, and you find somebody willing to work on them who actually knows what they're doing, they're great in the long term. So um, this whole conversation I'm having with you right now about panels is not going the way I planned. <laughs> when I thought about it, ahead of time, I wasn't flying an airplane. But here we are trying to fly to Gary, Indiana in terrible conditions that probably wouldn't be very realistic because like I said all over Sky Vector this is this is known icing conditions right now and um, we are fighting winds like crazy I'm curious what it's going to be like in Gary because on Sky Vector it said 24 sustained with 34 gust anyway let's see how are we doing We're kind of off track here a little bit well, that's okay. So there you go. There's my conversation about pianos that did not go as I had planned. But I think you get the gist of it. Um, I do have a degree in piano. I used to be semi-professional. I did make much of my living off of playing piano professionally. I don't anymore. Some of that is due to burnout. Some of that is due to not wanting to occupy my evenings and weekends playing piano when I have little kids because when they're home from school it's evenings and weekends so um, that's another reason for that what else um, I have a piano channel on YouTube link is in the description below for that um, I don't upload too often what I do is I will get my piano tuned and serviced and then I'll upload a bunch of stuff until the piano goes out of tune and then I don't upload again until the piano is tuned and serviced, but if you want to check out that channel and you like classical piano music, especially modern classical piano music, um, I play some pretty obscure stuff, but every once in a while I'll throw up a standard. Oh my gosh, look at the winter so strong, our ground speed is like nothing. Look at this. Holy cow. And we're just getting blown everywhere. I have my yoke like almost all the way to the right and we were turning left. This is crazy. But anyway, I'll stop talking now. And we'll fly through the clouds together. And um, I'm going to try to get us to Gary, but time is going backwards. Are we getting blown backwards? Seriously, look at that ETE. It's like going the other way. It was. Anyway, let's get above these clouds. And climb at 90 knots. And... Um, try to get closer to Gary. This is very difficult. Alright, we made above the clouds. Still very difficult, though. Oh, there's some cool shots. Let's see, what's that view? This one? There we go, that's kind of cool. Can't quite see Lake Michigan, though, because Lake Michigan would be over that way, under the clouds. Oh, no, we're getting blown the wrong way again. Let's turn back yet again. My goodness, we are just not making any progress here. Look at our time has gone up. I just want to climb a little bit higher and then level off so that we can get some speed. Jeez, this is nuts. What's your ground speed? Oh, we're doing 90 knots ground. That's good. All right, let's climb a little bit more. What are we at? We're almost at 7,000 feet. Let's just keep going up. Up, up, and away. Silver landing lights on. I'm going to keep them on the whole time. All right, bring the props back. We're going to level off a little bit. What did I say we wanted to cruise at? 2200 and 23. So 2200 on the props. And then 23 on manifold, which is what? That's 25. So there we go. 23 and 22, just like that. 
Let's trim down so we get some speed. And we'll just keep cruising right along here. Ground speed has gotten back. Whoops. Man, this is tough. It's a little smoother. A little. But not much. It's still really difficult. That's really cool, though, to see down below the clouds. I love that when clouds are broken. In both real life and in the simulator, of course. Huh, now we're ET. No, ETE is still going up. That's hilarious. Alright, we're about two minutes from our waypoint. It's been, oh my gosh, I don't know how long it's been. But um, we're going to start coming down. Because at our waypoint, we want to be at... 2,000 feet, and right now we're at 800, 8,700. So we're going to come down. Probably should have come down a lot sooner, but I was too busy just chilling and looking out windows and stuff. But anyway, um, if you're wondering where Lake Michigan is, it's actually right there under those clouds. You should be pretty close to it, actually. So um, we need to come down quickly because I wasn't paying any attention what I was doing so we we're actually going to make up time because we already have the low collider and glide slope and look at that we're already way too high so let's do a long long descent to the left kind of circle around and then come back to our localizer actually we might be okay kind of a steep descent but that's okay throttles are back whoa what do we need to do here let's not go that steep though but wrong checklist where's our descent checklist there it is. Um, how about we pay attention? Destination props forward throttle back to 15. Props are forward now. Yeah, we are way too high. I wasn't paying any attention. Fuel pump on, landing lights on. All right, let's do the fuel pump. I mean the landing, yeah, fuel pump, landing lights are still on. So now it's just a matter of circling around to cut this glide slope. So let's do exactly that. Instead of turning right, which we can't because we're way too high by like 3,000 feet, we're just going to buy some time here. Oh, well, let's see. Oh, that's telling me that my flaps and gear are not down and we've gone below 85 knots. Or 90 knots, maybe. No, 85 knots, I think, yeah. Yeah, I know, just calm down. We're just trying to lose some altitude here. So a little bit of throttle, just to give a little bit of speed, just to make it happy. We crossed the runway, but we're way too high. Well, let's um, let's turn back anyway and see here. Whoa, not that steep, and not that fast. Let's bring back throttles. And can I put 306 on the heading bug? Am I gonna be able to see that? There's 306. There. There we go. So now we know where the runway actually is. Okay, I know we're too slow. Speed up. Let's check that out too for a second. Yep, okay. Let's see here. We're going runway heading, but we're to the left of the runway. Where are we at? 4,000? Think we can come down fast enough to catch this Clyde slope? I don't know. We might have to make a circle here. We'll see. Oh my gosh. There's no way we can land in this weather, even if we were... Look at this. This is crazy. This isn't... No. Uh-uh. We're not going to land this plane. We are not going to land this plane. We're just going to go nuts here. Because the runway is in front of us. It should be... But off to the right, I think. Oh, yeah. There it is. There it is. See it? Sweet! I was right. It's in front of us, off to the right. We're not really going to make this, though. Let's see if we can. I don't think so. Oh my gosh. This wind. Look at that. That's not me. That's the wind doing all this. I'm not doing any of this. Oh my goodness. It wants more flap, but... I don't have any... I don't want to give it too many flaps right now. Well, I guess we might make this. Oh. 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 The gust, did you see the airspeed drop from like 80 to 62? <laughs> well, that's funny. This is, oh, now it's updating. We're not gonna land this thing. 
this is not this is not going to work. I'm going to try, but it's not going to work. This reminds me of the Alaskan episode. Remember the Alaskan episode in the Beaver, where her ground speed was like three, but her airspeed was 110. Do you remember that? That's what this reminds me of. Oh my gosh, this isn't even funny. Oh my goodness, yeah, that's all crosswind. Look, it's like 30 degree crosswind. Yeah, right. Let's see if we can put this down at least. Let's see if we set off the ELT. <laughs> if we land too hard, the ELT will start screaming at us. Let's see if it happens. Oh my gosh, this is, look at this crosswind. Look at, we're almost sideways. Oh my gosh, so that means the wind's coming from the left. So you want to do left wing, right rudder? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay, okay, here we go. Crosswind landing. <laughs> All right, here we go. Left wing down, right rudder. Ah, we're too high. Okay, I think so. Oh, blow stall, blow stall. There we go. Um, left wing, right rudder. Uh, except we're off the runway. Oh my gosh, we're going to do it? Nope. The wind gave up in it. Oh, we're not even on the runway, but let's try it. Oh, oh. Nice. We're not on the runway, but we landed. <laughs> oh my gosh, flaps in because it's blowing us. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Wow. I wasn't... Oh, that was all wind. That was all wind. That's insane. Let's, um... Let's stop a second, pull up the map. See off the runway, pull up the map, and let's see what these winds are. Oh my gosh, that was hilarious. Alright, let's get off here. That was not a serious landing, nor was it intended to be a serious landing. Let me make that very clear. You would not be flying this in real life right now. Not with this wind and the temperatures and the icing. No. No, you would not be flying this plane right now in real life. All right, let me see here. Let's just get out of here quickly. You can, oh, you can see Lake Michigan through the trees. All right, we'll just go to these hangars here. And then I want to see what the weather is. Yes, I know we're not supposed to taxi here. We already land on the grass instead of the runway, so let's just taxi where we're not supposed to. Not sure why not, but anyway, here we are. Let's just pull over here, whoop. Let's go this way. We're going so fast and the airspeed is so fast that it thinks we're stalling. All right, let's set the parking brake. Weather, yeah, 38 knots. <laughs> let's see, weather. Wind, 210 at 16, gust 30. All right, so I was doing the best I could. Look at that. I couldn't even get over there. Look at this. I mean, come on. That's more than a 30. That's like a 50 degree crosswind. Look at that. Oh my gosh. I couldn't even get over there. But I did. Let's see if I actually, even though I touched it on the grass, let's see if I actually would have been somewhat alive. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, no, because then we took off again. Nope. I thought I had. I didn't realize we came off the ground. I thought we had stayed on the ground, and then... And then that's why I stopped, because right here, boom, I thought we stayed on the ground. But I had to keep the throttles really engaged, because those gusts would stop, and then my airspeed would dip down to nothing. Like, if you were watching the airspeed indicator... Oh, my gosh, that's hilarious. All right, let's go over here. Landing lights off. Flaps up, they are. Whoops, I bumped my gear button, sorry. Flaps up, fuel pump off, right here. Um, Anti-collision and landing lights off, off. Parking brake is set. Avionics have to turn off, which I think is that. There we go, yep, because you see a change down there. Turn that off as well. Turn that off. Turn that off. Throttles to idle. They already are. Make sure to cut off. There we go. Megs to off. Turn off remaining lights. They're all... Why didn't PyTati get turned off yet? Alt to off. Battery to off. Fuel tank selector to off. I want to pick it up from here. There we go. Uh, open doors. So what's my door one? This one. 
Let's unlatch it and unlatch it like that and push it open or down to open, down to open. Um, this isn't really cooperating here. I think the wind is blowing it closed. Look, yeah. We're just going to have to deal. All right, let me do it from the menu. Look, it won't even open on the menu. Look at it. Nope, it's getting blown closed. All right, well, let's hop outside and let's do the baggage and the chocks. And I think that's all we do. Yes, there we go. All right, that was probably the weirdest video I've ever made for this channel between my disjointed story time about pianos and trying to land in whether that I just, yeah, wouldn't fly in real life, obviously. But anyway, so if you are new to the channel, thank you for joining us. Please subscribe. And this is not, this video is not representative of my channel as a whole. Look at that door. It's getting blown closed. Anyway, this video is not, this is, this is a silly video. So um, if you found my channel by accident, watch some other videos, please. That's what I'm trying to say. If you are a regular subscriber, thank you for continuing to support. And I'm getting out of here before I make this even more ridiculous than I already have. And I'll catch you on the next one.